What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about protein and how it actually may be protective for your kidney. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new study just got published in the Journal of Nutrition, Obesity and Exercise looking at protein intake later in life with people who have either normal kidney function or chronic kidney disease. So it was a cohort of about 14,400 people, of which about a third of those had some form of CKD. Now, they excluded people who were stage four or stage five or who were undergoing a kidney transplant. So you had people who are either normal kidney function or who suffered from chronic kidney disease stage one through three. And they looked at 10-year mortality outcomes. The reason this comes about is because for the last hundred years, the dogma present in the medical literature is if you have some form of kidney problem, you should restrict protein to the minimum. And even doctors have recommended to people to follow a low protein diet because their postulation is protein is hard on the kidneys. Now, where does this come from? Well, this comes from uh, a bit of epidemiology mixed with some mechanistic speculation. Protein is made up of amino acids. And amino acids are unique in that they have a nitrogen component. The amine component refers to an ammonia group on the amino acid. Now, this is not free ammonia because free ammonia is toxic and would kill you. But as bonded as part of amino acid, it's totally fine. If your body's not using those amino acids for protein synthesis and it wants to oxidize them or use the carbon skeletons for other functions in the body, it has to deaminate or get rid of that ammonia group, and it has to do so through a series of metabolic reactions. Now, these metabolic reactions transfer that ammonia group through several different reactions, finally to a compound called urea. And urea is non-toxic and can be eliminated by the kidneys. But because the kidneys are involved, some people have postulated that higher protein diets put more strain on the kidneys. Over the last probably three decades, Quite a few randomized control trials have come out looking at protein intake, showing pretty clearly that it does not harm a healthy kidney. In fact, a recent systematic review and meta-analyses showed that protein does not harm a healthy kidney. And this is pretty consistent in the literature. Now you can find some epidemiology linking increased incidence of kidney disease with higher protein intakes, but we've talked about the difficulties with epidemiology and obviously randomized control trials where you are controlling for confounding variables are much more reliable outcome with less bias. But people and experts recommend to restrict protein if you have kidney disease. Now, more recently, there have been some studies coming out showing that this may not actually be the best thing. And in this study, they looked at 10 year mortality outcomes in elderly people who were either healthy or had kidney disease stages one through three. What they showed was not only did protein not increase mortality, it actually consistently had a dose-dependent protective effect. So in people with chronic kidney disease, total protein intake per 0.2 gram per kilo increment. So they looked at 0.8 grams per kilogram all the way up to 1.6 grams per kilogram. So per 0.2 gram per kilogram increment, they saw an 8% decreased risk of mortality for people with CKD. And the difference between the lowest amount of protein intake versus the highest amount of protein intake was a relative 23% reduction in the risk of mortality with people who are eating 1.6 grams per kilo of protein versus people eating 0.8 grams per kilo of protein. So that was in people with CKD. Now, in people who didn't have CKD, it actually had a more powerful effect. So going from 0.8 grams per kilo of protein to 1.6 grams per kilo of protein reduced the relative risk of mortality by almost 50%. And this held true for both animal and plant protein. So if we look at the reduction in risk with animal protein amongst healthy people without CKD, it was per 0.2 increment, about a 12% reduction in the risk of mortality. So it actually 
protein actually had a slightly more protective effect in people who were healthy, but it still had a pretty significant protective effect in people who were unhealthy with chronic kidney disease. And that's important that that's consistent because if it was just in the group that was healthy, it would be possibly easy to say, this is an issue of reverse causality. People who are living longer are in better shape overall and able to eat more protein. People as they age tend to eat less protein. But I think with it being pretty consistent across whether they had CKD or not, people who have CKD are usually a little bit more frail, less healthy, and so I think there's less chance for reverse causality with, with both of those showing similar improvements. But it was a bit more protective in people who were healthy without chronic kidney disease. But when we go to animal protein, we do see still a linear risk reduction with increasing animal protein. From 0.6 grams per kilo per day of animal protein intake, to 1.2 grams per kilo per day of animal protein intake, there was a relative 32% reduction in risk of mortality. Per 0.2 kilo increment is about a 12% risk reduction. So basically, they're looking at these reductions in risk with increasing protein intake and trying to figure out, okay, if we increase, every time we increase 0.2 grams per kilo of animal protein, how much relative risk reduction do we get? And you may say, well, you were just talking about 0.8 to 1.6. Why are you talking about 0.6 to 1.2? Well, remember, everyone's diet, mostly everyone's diet, unless you're completely plant-based or completely animal-based, most everyone's diet has protein from both plant and animal sources. And so if your total protein intake is, say, 1.6 grams per kilo, then you may have 1.2 grams per kilo from animal and 0.4 grams from plant. In the people with CKD, we saw a relative risk reduction of 12% per 0.2 grams per kilo of intake. And the difference between the lowest intake of animal protein versus the highest intake of animal protein was a relative risk reduction of about 32% overall. And this was true in people without CKD, about 11% relative risk reduction per 0.2 grams per kilo increment of animal protein. And the difference between the lowest amount and highest amount was a relative risk reduction of 26%. I don't think there was probably differences between people with or without CKD, that was pretty consistent. They did break it down into a little bit more subsection of animal protein intake, and they found that fish in particular was associated with a risk reduction. But when they looked at meat and dairy specifically, it was a slight non-significant reduction in risk. It can be hard to tease these things apart in these sorts of studies because we are dealing with kind of messy cohort data. But this tracks with what we've seen before. I don't necessarily think there's anything magical about fish. I think that people who eat more fish in their diet relative to red meat and dairy probably pay more attention to their overall diet. Selecting fish are usually people who are relatively health conscious. And so I think this may be a case of more of a health promoting behavior that's kind of a confounding variable, but it does track with what we know in other studies that fish seems to have a more protective effect. Now, whether that is because it just, fish doesn't really have saturated fat in it. It's very, very low in saturated fat, uh, and saturated fat can be a risk for various diseases. And it's just lean overall, typically. And if it isn't lean, if it's a fattier fish, you're still dealing with something like salmon, which has a high omega-3 ratio and omega-3s may have protective effects uh, for various metabolic diseases. So I'm not surprised by this data. I don't suddenly think that meat or dairy maybe has no protective effect. I think maybe this is where confounding variables come in. Maybe they do have no protective effect, but if they do, I don't think it's because of anything magical. I think it's because those meat and dairy sources probably have more overall fat and calories, whereas fish tends to be very lean. And if it's not, it's still, you know, quote unquote, healthy fats. Now, plant protein, they looked at from point 0.25 grams per kilogram per day to 0.65 grams per kilogram per day. Well, why is that? It's harder to get in protein from plants. It's, it's a less concentrated source of protein. So the ranges are going to be different that they use. And they found in people with CKD from the lowest increment of plant protein to the highest, there was a relative 42% reduction in risk. And per 0.2 increment, 
there was about a 20% reduction in risk in people with CKD. That is pretty powerful, more powerful than we saw with animal protein. Now, switching over to people without CKD, plant protein actually had a very profound protective effect on the risk of mortality. So from the lowest intake of plant protein to the highest, uh, you're looking at about a 61% reduction in risk. And per 0.2 increment of plant protein, they saw about a 39% reduction in risk of mortality in people without CKD. Okay, let me try to expand on what I think that means. At the end of the day, when you break down a protein source, what appears in circulation and what appears to your kidneys is just amino acids. You're not getting complete intact plant protein into circulation. You're not getting complete intact animal protein into circulation. And so I don't think there's anything specific about the protein in plant or animal that's really making that difference. What I think is more likely is a couple things. I think that plants come with a lot of other healthy nutrients like fiber, which we already know fiber has a myriad of health promoting benefits. Maybe there's some with the kidney as well. People who eat more plants tend to have other health promoting behaviors as well. And plants come with various other micronutrients. Some people have postulated that some of the minerals in plants may help have a buffering effect with pH and who knows. I'm not sure if I buy it in terms of the outcomes on the kidney. I think that eating more plant protein is a good idea overall in that if you're eating more plants, you're getting more fiber, you're getting more of these micronutrients, you're getting more of these protective effects. And per gram of protein, plant had a more protective effect on the risk of mortality in people with or without CKD. I don't think it necessarily has anything to do with the actual proteins themselves. I think it's more about the other things that are in the food. Again, animal sources of protein tend to have fat, sometimes high in saturated fat along with them. But again, I think it's important to point out, both had a protective effect. It's just that the protective effect on a per gram basis was greater for plant protein than it was for animal protein. Now they even stratified it into age. They basically found that people younger than 75 years old still got benefits from total protein, plant protein, animal protein, it was still protective, but the benefits maxed out around 1.2 grams per kilogram. But in people who were over 75 years old, the benefits appeared to be quite linear all the way up to 1.6 grams per kilo. What does that mean? I think this is where it could be a bit of reverse causality. People who are able to eat more protein are in better shape overall, and so there's more risk reduction because they're in better shape overall. But I do think as you get older, based on what we know about the machinery of muscle protein synthesis, based on what we know about sarcopenia, if you can eat more protein, it's gonna be protective against a lot of age-related decline. And again, it's really hard to argue based on this study, as well as the randomized control trials, you just can't make a strong argument that protein negatively affects a healthy kidney. And at least in CKD stages one through three, you really can't make the argument that it's bad for the kidney because this showed very clearly consistent dose-dependent reductions in the risk of mortality. So where to go with this data? Well, I think what I would say is, one, I'm not a nephrologist. So if you have a kidney disease, you should still be speaking to your nephrologist about this sort of stuff. But I think it just shows that we need to shift the framework of how we think about kidney disease away from this dogma that protein is bad when we have quite a bit of data to show that protein not only isn't bad, but might actually be protective. And so we've been telling people eat low protein if they have CKD for years, we might have actually been causing them more harm. And one of the things to keep in mind is if you're eating low protein, even if it had some kind of protective effect in terms of reducing urea output and being less hard on the kidneys, it's still more difficult to recover if you have some kind of disease if you are not getting enough protein in. And again, there are no solutions, there are only trade-offs. So if you lower your protein, maybe you get a benefit somewhere, but there's also gonna be some downsides somewhere. And at least right now, based on this data set, the downsides may outweigh the upsides. If you guys enjoy these research breakdowns, make sure you subscribe to my research review reps. 
Every month we review five studies that are popular in fitness nutrition. We break them down in a way that is palatable and easy to understand. So click the link in the description, sign up for that, and I will catch you guys next week.